Hey guys, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. I'm Zelda Master, and in this episode, we're gonna be making our way to Kakariko Village, because according to Impa, that is where we're supposed to go to find the next spiritual stone, and uh, hopefully we'll find some other things as well. So I am excited, and the easiest way to there is just running straight to the... Uh, I'm trying to think northeast, so head to the east of Hyrule, I guess, if you're facing this way. Um, but Navi wants to talk to us, and, and you know, I'm just going to go ahead and check what she has to say. So Impa said the spiritual stone of fire is somewhere on Death Mountain. Death Mountain is located behind Kakariko Village, so, you know, we're heading to Kakariko Village, which is convenient, of course, because that is where we're going to find it. Uh, so, surprise, you know, I had it all planned, but Navi had to tell us as well, who cares? I mean, if you're ever looking for tips and for some reason you don't know what to do, you can always rely on Navi. She should tell you from time to time, and she'll tell you the exact same thing again if you have it, like, checked what she had to say and or just wasting time and not actually going to said area. But here we are, guys. We are in Kakariko Village, and oh my god, a... A cuckoo that's lost, oh, I should take you back to your mother. I mean, you must be worried. I bet the owner is worried sick about this cuckoo, so let's go ahead and quickly rush back. How can people let a cuckoo just run around like this? I mean, seriously, this is horrible. So, let's go ahead and quickly run and oh, look at that, a fence. I wonder if this is a cuckoo pen. Let's go ahead and talk to this lady here. So, my cuckoos have ran away. Please catch six more. Re so, you should expect me to do it for you? Okay, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, this is the cuckoo lady. She looks, uh, familiar somehow, some way, but, um, she has her cuckoos in a bunch, and she needs us to find them all, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. And for some reason, I'm like, is that a cuckoo? But no, that's just a rock. But yeah, guys, this is Kakariko Village. It looks really freaking awesome, because... I, l I just love the way they l it looks in the 3DS remake. Um, one thing, you have so many posters and signs all over the wall, and just the way the bricks look and everything, it really pops out, and it does feel like this medieval type of village. And I love it. I just love the way Kakariko Village looks. Adding on to this music, this music just makes me want to go to bed. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah, this music is really freaking nice. But let's go ahead and toss this cuckoo here, uh, and then grab this one that's trying to run away from us. There are six in total, I believe we have so far thrown, uh, three into the pen, so, so far so good, I guess, but we need to find the other three, and, uh, believe it or not, they're all going to be located right over here. If we go ahead and, uh, jump like this, you're going to need a kooka for this as well. Uh, okay, good. Yeah, everyone, round of applause for Link, because that jump was absolutely amazing, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, so Link's jump should be a lot better than that, obviously. He can actually jump. I don't know why he did that weird uh, sissy jump there, but go ahead and leap. Thank you. You can actually make it to the other side of the fence like this. Go ahead and throw this cuckoo overboard, because we don't need him anymore, as well as this one. So this is the one that is hiding from behind the fence that we're gonna, you know, we needed another cuckoo to actually make it here. And there's another one as well, so don't go ahead and jump off yet. We're gonna go ahead and pick up this one that is hiding up near the windmill. I believe this is a windmill hut. I'm gonna ignore it though, I'm not gonna enter it or do anything about it. Something really cool lies in here, but we will check it out in another time. But let's go ahead and run around here, and well, what do you know? They are all on the other side, so we can take them all to this fence, and they'll be safe, and the cuckoo lady will be happy. She'll have all of her babies, and, you know, hopefully she'll make some cuckoo eggs or something, and we can, uh, we can have them. Actually, I wonder if we go ahead and check our items, not gear. Okay, never mind. Uh, the cuckoo we had with us, I believe, was replaced with the princess's letter that she gave us. So, never mind, like, when Princess Zelda gave us that letter, I'm pretty sure... Uh, it was replaced, or it replaced a cuckoo with uh, the letter itself, because I guess you're only supposed to have one, like, key item within your inventory that will allow you to progress through the game, which I find it cool regardless, but let's go ahead and speak to her now. So, my cuckoos have ran away. Please help bring the last one back to the pen, please. Oh, okay, wait wait a second. Oh, she, she had six more, and one was already in? So that was pretty dumb on my part. Uh, I totally forgot that there is still one more up here. 
running around. I don't know, for some reason I just didn't think of it. I'm like, wait, there should be a cuckoo up here, but I mean, if she said I have them all, then I'm good. But no, it's seven in total because, yeah, it was six and then, you know, including the one that was already into the pen, so. Yeah, I derped, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and quickly throw it in. Hey, lady, how's it going? So thank you for fighting my cuckoos. I have allergies, so I get goosebumps when I touch them. For helping me, I will give you, uh, I'll give this to you. Isn't it all sparkly and pretty? Please take good care of it. What is it? <gasps> An empty bottle? Thanks. I, I love bottles. Little does she know that I am a bottle collector. I already have one with some Lon Lon milk, and now I have another one. So I am freaking happy. All right, thanks, lady. I'll see you never because most likely you will not be able to take care of those cuckoos, and I don't want to help you fetch them again because it took me a while as it is. But here in Kakariko Village, there's a graveyard where they bury the the dead. That because graveyards. Well, that's how graveyards work. Welcome everybody. Surprise. Anyways, under this rock, you can find a couple bugs that will swarm right out of it. Make sure you pick up one with your bottle. Yes, we're going to contaminate our bottle with a bug, but that's fine. And what we want to do is we want to head over to this soft patch and just drop the bug right on top of it. It will make its own home in it. And, uh, well, they will all enter it. Somehow we only grabbed one bug, but it created three by the time it entered the bottle. And then it will create a big... <gasps> Giant bug! That's a golden skulltula. Yes, we got a gold skulltula from throwing some bugs within the soft patch. Now, before I do anything else, I would like to grab some more because we're going to need more bugs for another time. So make sure you go ahead and actually, uh, we need this rock to respawn so I can easily exit this area and come back and then the rock will reappear and then we can pick up more bugs. I'm gonna do that because I don't know another convenient area where I'm gonna find some bugs. I mean, you can find them all over Hyrule. But this is an area I have down to the brain, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use this as my area for bugs. You know, anytime I need bugs, I'll just come to this rock that constantly respawns after I break it and uh, pick myself up a bug. But let's go ahead and put it away because I don't wanna see Link holding that bottle and let's go ahead and talk to this little kid. So little kids can't go on the heart pounding grave tour described on the sign. Since I can't do that, I'm just imitating Dompe the gravekeeper all day. But with my cute face, I'm not heart pounding at all. Am I? Aw no, he's he's really cute. <laughs> he's just running around with a stake acting like an old man, which is Dompe the gravekeeper, but whatever. Okay, we're gonna have, we're gonna let him do what he wants. I'm not gonna annoy the little kid. Let him be a gravekeeper if he wants to. And here we want to play Zelda's Lullaby. If you couldn't tell by the stone slab where it is standing on top, you know, it has a Triforce, which, can, well, I mean, the Triforce doesn't really uh, indicate that it has something to do with the royal family because it is the Triforce, but it should kind of hint to that. So just take out your ocarina and play it right in front of this giant tombstone, and uh, something will happen. As you can tell, it started to rain, and uh, it's dark all of a sudden. Oh my god, what is this? Oh, wow, that was really dramatic. <laughs> really small, like, thunder hit the thing, and then, after a second, you saw light merge out of it, and then it exploded. So yeah, that was like a mini little cutscene. I remember the first time I saw it within the game, I was so fascinated. I don't even know why, but it was just like, whoa! That actually happened because, you know, I played Zelda's Lullaby. Well, that's awesome. But yeah, you want to play Zelda's Lullaby to enter this tombstone. And as you can tell, it's really freaky. You have bones all around here. I mean, what the crap? Also, some keys, which are these bat enemies I went ahead and killed. You got to kill all four of them within the room to progress throughout this area. But that's besides the point. What I want to do is I actually want to check this. So, shine light on the living dead. Okay, what's the living dead? I mean, you're clearly dead because you're just skeleton, so I don't know, but let's see. Oh, no! All right, so these enemies, my friends, are the worst. These are re-deads, and you know what? I'm just going to demonstrate what happens because I hate these guys so much, and this is the reason why uh, it took me like a year to beat this game my very first time around. Because this, they literally suck the life out of you if they grab onto you. And it's really freaky and terrifying. And when I was like five or six years old, I was so terrified that I just couldn't play the game 
uh, for a really long time. Heck, I threw the cartridge. It was my mom's cartridge. I went ahead and threw it in the trash. I just did not want anyone to play this game because of these scary re-deads. So, yeah, they are that terrifying to me. But over here, there is this stone slab. So this poem is dedicated to the memory of the dearly departed members of the royal family. I wonder what it says. So... The rising sun will eventually set, a newborn's life will fade. From sun to moon, moon to sun, give peaceful rest to the living dead. This is an interesting poem, huh? Not really, something else is inscribed on the tombstone. It's a secret melody of the composer's brothers. Ah, oh, sounds nice. I guess we should play it with our ocarina. And just like that, we learned the Sun Song. This is really, really, really important to have within the game if you just want things to be like super duper convenient for you. So yeah, you've learned the Sun Song. So how the song works pretty much is every time you play it, you can change the cycle from day to night, from night to day, back and forth, anytime you want. So it's really helpful. And another thing, if you remember what that skeleton told us right outside of this room, if we play it, here, well, he just said shine light on the living dead. So we're gonna go ahead and play this. This should shine light within the room, I guess. And it shall paralyze all of these re-deads, allowing you to exit this area easily and not having to enter this weird, uh, I was gonna say purple, but I don't know why, green acid. I know my colors. <laughs> But yeah, so there we go. We made it out safe and sound. We are good to go and we can exit this place. Now, when we first learned the sun song, it actually affected the day and now it's nighttime. So yeah, from day to night, from doing that. And if you look at that, oh no, that cute little kid, he became an ugly old man and his stick turned into a shovel. That sucks. But yeah, guys, guys this is Dompe, the gravekeeper, and we're... Uh, around the hour of his grave tour. So we can go ahead and have him uh, dig certain spots for 10 rupees on these soft patches. And hopefully, nope, nothing here. Hopefully we can get ourselves a piece of heart. You can actually get a piece of heart from having him do this. But this is so annoying and requires so much rupees and uh, I'm just not really up for it. So I'm going to completely ignore it and let Dompe do his own thing as I decide to jump into this tombstone. Now you can only move tombstones during the night while Dompe is patrolling and even if he's not patrolling around the graveyard, as long as it's nighttime you can move them so you want to. And in this particular tombstone we can get ourselves a Hylian shield. Now, if we go ahead and equip it, you'll notice that it's really big on us and it doesn't seem to work out that well. I mean, because we can't really block with it, we're just looking down. It's going to be really, really, really helpful though at a certain point, so it's a good thing that we have it. And I'll actually equip it when we need it. For now, I'll just use my Deku shield because I like the way it looks and I love the logo. Overall, the Deku shield just looks super duper badass. Here's a gold skull that we cannot obtain, so I'm just going to ignore it, and I want to go ahead and push back. I believe this tombstone, I might be wrong. No, it is. Okay, yeah, so there's another hole in this one, so go ahead and enter it. And, well, you'll find, oh, no, one of these reed heads. Ah, oh, man, I'm not in the mood. All right, let's go ahead and play the sun song real quickly because, yeah, I don't really want to mess with any of these guys. So we're just going to try to kill him off as soon as possible. So go ahead and once you hit him, he can start attacking you. And if he screams, he'll freeze you in place. So I'm going to go ahead and run back. I'm going to go ahead and try to attack him. Jump back. Come on, target. Navi, Navi, please work with me. I will love you. If you okay, what is up with this? That's something I do not. No, 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 no. I'm dead. I'm literally dead. I died already. No. Oh, my God. What? Wow, okay, my heart literally started pounding because I thought I was dead. Phew, okay, we're fine. Near death experience, that's okay. You know, we were able to prevail. We killed the re-dead with a quarter of a heart left. But for some reason, Navi didn't want to target, so I couldn't like actually hit him uh, properly. But I was able to kill the re-dead. It takes a bunch of hits, as you can tell. We are really weak compared to them, so yeah but I was able to kill it, and it doesn't matter if you kill it or not. Regardless, you want to open up 
uh, a chest by playing the sun song right in front of here. The chest will appear once you do so. And there you go. You get yourself a piece of art. Really perfect timing as well to pick up this piece of art because, um, as you saw, I, I only had a quarter of a heart like a second ago. So, yeah, perfect timing if I do say so myself. Now, something I'm not too sure of is uh, this right here. If we allow Dompe to approach this area again and pay 10 rupees, will we get lucky? Oh, we can. Okay. So I guess you can enter and exit uh, an area back and forth to have Dompe dig this exact patch. And maybe you'll get lucky and get the piece of heart. I don't have the rupees for this. I'm going to have to come back and do this little mini game. We'll be back in the graveyard quite a bit because as you can tell, there's a gold skull claw over there. And there are a bunch of other things and goodies that we can obtain. So it doesn't matter if we do it now or later. So yeah, it's just a piece of heart that we'll end up getting sometime. But... I love the way this area looks. I wonder if we can actually sneak into Dompe's place right now since he's patrolling. He's not asleep. Only when he's asleep, you can't head inside here. So, yes, we actually can. This is the Gravekeeper's Hut. Let's go ahead and check this out. So, the Gravekeeper's Diary is here. Do you want to read it? Sure. When I dug a hole, I found a treasure that stretches, boing, and str uh, shrinks, boing. Uh, it was, it's so fun. I'll never give it to anybody. Now, I'm assuming he's talking about uh, a gossip stone, but I'm not too sure, honestly, because what stretch is like that? You know what? I'm going to go ahead and test my luck for like the third time here and see if I can get luck and get the piece of heart. I mean, I got lucky already this episode, so why not push it? Let's go ahead and see. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, sweet. A green rupee. Just what I needed. Thanks, man. Okay, well... Yeah, <sighs> whatever. I, I'm not gonna complain. That that's fine with me. I'll take it. Whatever. All right. So there's one more thing I want to do right now, as soon as possible. It is nighttime here in Kakariko Village, and there's a couple uh, gold skulls we'll be able to obtain around here. So let's go ahead and do that. The first one can be located over here. It's hiding from us, but I'll go ahead and kill you off and. There we go, we got ourselves a gold skulltula. Let's keep looking, because they are all over this place, and we want to, you know, kill them all, just so the people here are safe in the city of Kakariko. I'm sure they are worried at night that these gold skulltulas will be making noise. I mean, that is pretty scary, right? I don't know. It's not really, but whatever. Um, So I'm trying to think. All right, there, there's actually one over here, I'm pretty sure. If we go ahead and hit this tree like this. Yes. Let's go ahead and kill this guy. There we go. That's our third gold skull already within Kakariko Village. And I want to talk to this guy right here and see what he has to say. Because I'm a little curious. So, people are disgusting. My own father and mother are disgusting. You must be disgusting too. Wow. Thanks, man. I don't even, I don't even know this guy. He just assumes I'm disgusting. Alright, whatever. I'll, I'll let him say what he wants. I'm not, though. But it's up to him. <laughs> it's just it's just a pretty upset and not so down to earth dude, but what can we do? We can't really do anything about it. So there's another gold skull hiding up here on this ladder. Go ahead and climb all the way to the top to pick it up and just drop it down. Oh, okay, we're good. And there I believe is only one more that we can get currently, and it's right here, so let's go ahead and kill it. Ooh, some hearts. Perfect. Alright. I just want to kill this guy and pick it up. Now, I believe in total we have, what, 14? Yes, we do. Perfect. So with these 14 gold skull claws, we'll be able to pick up something really nice that we'll do in the next episode. So thank you all so much for watching this episode of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. I've been Zelda Master. I'm going to go ahead and play the sun song so we can start off the next episode during the day. So I'll see you all in the next one.